everyone. We are joined by Arizona catcher Deja Molipola. Paul, if you want to go ahead and get us started. Hi, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, just uh, kind of tell us uh, tell us your your feelings as a player and uh, and how your team feels coming into this super regional. Super excited. I mean. Uh, we just finished our practice right now. It's obviously a lot more humid than Tucson, but I mean, we're just excited to be here and to be in Super Regionals and have a chance to go to the World Series. How do you feel about your 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 team's mood and, and how do you feel about your team's offense uh, headed into here? It seemed like you guys had a really good weekend swinging it. Yeah, coming off of last week, and I think um, we're looking pretty solid right now offensively and defensively, and I think that's very important going into Super Regionals and being able to play on the road right now. Um, so having all of our cylinders hit right now and being on the road, I mean, that's a big confidence booster for us. Yeah. And I was going to ask too, uh, your feelings of you, you've got kind of a mix of some younger players with some, some older players. How do you feel like that will play in being on the road this weekend? Um, I think it's going to be awesome for them because they never experienced something like this before. And, I take it upon myself and as well as the senior class, we take it very personal to be able to lead them through our experience that we've been able to go through. I mean, some of us have been to the Supers three out of four years here. Um, this is my second, third or fourth. I, I forget because I've been here for so long, but I mean, we just have a lot of experience that we're able to share with them. So I think that they're pretty comfortable. They trust us. Um, and that's the cool thing is that we're able to share that experience that we have with them. The other thing I was going to ask is, is the crowd. Uh, you know, it's been an unusual year, obviously, that not a lot of crowds places, but I know you guys had a nice crowd at your place uh, on Sunday. So you got that experience. How, what's the experience like coming into a, a, a visiting uh, club like this and, and knowing that there's going to be a big crowd against you? Yeah, that was a, a great home field advantage was having our Tucson fans at 100% capacity. And if you know Tucson fans, they're the best. I mean, they get rowdy, especially in postseason. So, I mean, to be in another stadium with their home field advantage and their fans, it's going to be difficult. But I think um, at the end of the day, as long as we play Arizona softball, we know we have our fans back home rooting for us, even though they're not here physically. So um, there's that. And it also prepares us for Oklahoma City. I mean, there's going to be millions of people watching there's going to be tens of thousands of people there um, and they're not always going to be your fans so it's preparing us for that and I think that's the cool thing right now all right I'll let somebody else go thank you thank you anybody has a question for Deja just raise your hand DJ hi Deja hello um so first I want to ask you a couple questions about Charlize um what have you seen from her I mean, she steps up, has a really big weekend last weekend. She's had a great uh, year. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think it's in her that, you know, here this was, was a big moment. She had never experienced postseason and she was just unfazed, right? She just went and did her thing. Sort of, what do you see in her? Well, she's matured a lot since I first met her. Um, and I think that's a tribute to her character. I mean, she has an older sister who's been, to the postseason before who obviously has collegiate experience. So I'm sure that she talks to her a lot through this. I mean, she's just grown up around softball. So that's the cool thing for her. She has that experience, even though she wasn't physically playing the sport, um, but she's very mature now. And I think um, she's been a big contributing factor. I mean, offensively, defensively, she helps me out when she goes into the games to catch. And I think her big mentality right now is to breathe. I mean, she tells me that all the time when I go up to bat is to breathe. She tells other batters to breathe. And I think as a freshman, that's huge coming from them to tell an upperclassman like, hey, breathe, have your at bat. And I think that's just a cool thing because our younger girls are so, it's like they've been here before and they haven't. So they have that experience, they have that maturity. And I think that speaks tributes to their character. And is there anything that you, I know that you talk to her all the time, especially that you play the same position, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you have given her tips along throughout the whole entire year about different things to help I mean, her? Anything that she has questions with, obviously I'm more than willing to share with her. Um, but I mean, for the most part, like I said, she's grown up around the game. She has a sister who's also caught. So it's like, she has all of this, tool set, these people who have all this experience that she can go to. So, I mean, I'm just there whenever she needs me, if she wants me. 
Um, but I mean, for the most part, she's just a great ball player. I mean, she's competitive. She's mature. She's, she's awesome all around. So, I mean, she really doesn't need too much help from me, but when she does, I'm here. And, and what's it like for you to see sort of the, that you're passing the baton to Charlize because you started when you were a freshman and, yeah. and you're an, uh, going to be an Olympian and you're all, all everything. And so to be able to pass the baton to, to the next great catcher, how does that feel? I love that for her because this is her freshman year and she's putting up video game numbers. I mean, she's hit so many home runs more than I hit my freshman year. So to see what's to come in the future is going to be exciting. It's giving me chills right now just talking about it because she is a great play, player and person. So I'm very excited um, to be able to watch that and to know that the program is going to be in good hands with another catcher behind the plate like her. Great. One more quick question is yeah. what's the vibe for you guys all week now and now coming into your super regionals? Um, the vibe is definitely just be us. I mean, we learned that this past weekend, we can only go as far as we let ourselves. And as long as we're in our way, we'll never get where we want to be. So as long as we're us playing Arizona softball the way we know how and truly embracing that, we'll be fine. So as long as we play like we did last weekend and continuing that into this weekend, I think we'll be in good hands. Great. Thanks, Deja. Thank you so much. Troy. There we go. Uh, so Deja, last weekend, you guys did a great job at situational hitting. How do you continue that in this uh, Super Regional? I think just staying calm. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of nerves being on the road, being in another um, state with not our fans there to hype us up. Um, but I think if we just stay calm, trust in what the work we've put in and um, just understand how to slow the game down. I think that's going to be a big thing too, because when you're in another stadium in the postseason, you know what's on the line, the game will speed up on you. And I think that's what coach does a good job of preparing us because he speeds practice up sometimes, but that's for a purpose. And I think coming into postseason, um, as long as we're slowing things down, we know what situation we're in, we're able to just put the ball in play and, and get timely hits, we're going to be fine. And then not only Charlize had a big weekend, but so did Janelle, uh, Janelle and Carly. How are these freshmen able to succeed in those big moments? Because it seems different from a normal freshman. Oh, man, I don't know. I mean, they're big time players. I guess that's that's the end of it. Um, and I, I can't say it's because the seniors. I can't say it's anyone but themselves. I mean, they've taken it upon themselves to put in the work and to be able to produce at this level. So that's all on them and, and everything that they've put into this program and their freshman year. So, I mean, they've done a great job and that's all a tribute to them. And then lastly, Oklahoma and Washington, they're going to be on ABC. Can you just talk about how much the game's grown since you were a freshman to now and how exciting that is? That's a big deal. I mean, I've been around a lot of players and I still am around a lot of players that are trying to grow the game, especially on Team USA. So, I mean, this is a huge, huge, huge deal for it to be the first ever game on ABC. And I'm so excited for the Washington and Oklahoma girls that they're the ones that get to be televised. I mean, they're great players, great athletes. I know most of them. So, I mean, that's just cool for softball in general. And I'm, I'm excited to see how we move forward um, with this sport and with televised games in the future. We have time for two more questions. Ryan. So um, as a Pac-12 team in, in SEC territory for Supers, I mean, do you have any extra motivation based on, on what happened on Selection Sunday and, and kind of the the disrespect there was toward the Pac-12? I mean, I can't really speak too much on SEC because we really haven't played them. And um, I mean, the Pac-12 teams that kind of didn't get the result that they wanted in postseason, I mean, they're great teams. Washington is a great team. And um, I'm just excited to see what they're going to do this weekend. And I know that we're going to play our game and we're going to try to represent for the Pac-12, um, regardless of what that looks like. So. I mean, like I said, I can't speak too much on the SEC. I don't know too much about them, but the Pac-12 is a hard conference. And I think, um, I just think we just have to show out regardless of where we're seated. And uh, people always talk about how uh, Hill and Brand plays differently because of the hard, the hard dirt and the way the ball carries. Have you noticed anything unique about uh, Bogle Park? Uh, yeah, the air is definitely thicker than here. <laughs> it is definitely not home run you here. Um, so I think it's going to be very important to hit line drives and a lot of ground balls this weekend. All right, thanks, everyone. That will wrap us up with Deja Mully Polo. We'll get Coach Candrea going in just a couple of minutes. Thank you.
Everyone, we are joined by Arizona head coach Mike Candrea. Paul, if you want to go ahead and get us started. Hey, uh, coach, uh, just uh, said you just uh, completed your first practice there at Bogle. Uh, give us your thoughts on uh, on Bogle Park and the uh, the surroundings there in Fayetteville. Well, it's a great facility, and um, we're very excited to be here. You know, the the humidity is a little bit different, but um, born in Louisiana, I know what it's all about, and Sometimes it feels kind of good to get in there, get you nice and loose. But uh, yeah, we're just uh, very, very excited to advance to this point and and uh, look forward to competing here this weekend. Uh, do you feel like your your team uh, comes in with a little momentum uh, from uh, from the weekend? You know, scored some runs and yeah. and uh, and got going, especially with that nice performance on Sunday. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I think this team right now is um, it's it's where I we would like them to be, you know, um, last weekend, they got the job done and, and, uh, offensively looked really good. And when you do that, you gain some confidence as, as hitters, uh, thought we played fairly good defense and, and, um, you know, the key, when you get here, we all know it's going to be, um, is pitching and, and, um, playing great defense and getting timely hits. You know, I, the one great thing about Arizona, the ball carries quite well. And I think here, probably not as much. So, um, you know, our, our biggest goal is to make sure that we are swinging at good pitches and, and making solid contact. And uh, from there, the game will take care of itself. I'll let somebody else. Thank, thank you, coach. You got it. DJ. Hi, coach. Um, what do you think are the, you know, the matchup with Arkansas right now and the similarities of both teams? Well, there's um, some similarities. I think, um, you know, Arkansas is a very solid team um, uh, starting in a circle and, and um, they, they're kind of a different offensive team, lots of power numbers, um, kind of grip it and rip it um, type. And, you know, we like to kind of have a combination of our, our speed and our power. And so there's a little bit of difference there. Um, but um, I think both teams are, are good defensively. Both teams are very battle tested. You know, Arkansas has had a great year and, and won the SEC uh, regular season, and we know all about that. You know, we know that we're coming into a, a place where they will have lots of fans and, and they're playing good softball, and I think that's what postseason is all about. You know, you, you, there's never an easy road um, to get to, to to the promised land, which is Oklahoma City, and, and playing in the final eight. So um, we expect to have a very tough, um, competitive uh, weekend, and – I think right now our team's in a good place and we just need to go out and and uh, and compete and have a little bit of fun. And what do you think about Charlize's makeup um, that she sort of, you know, she's had a great season and last weekend she wasn't phased by the moment, yeah. right? She just went out and did her thing. Well, that's the strength of Charlize um, Palacio. She's, um, she's very got really good emotional stability and um I've, I've watched her as a young kid growing up and when we recruited her she uh she lived for the big moments um i had never have seen her get rattled and and um you know she's 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 got really good composure for a kid of her age and um i have a lot of confidence in her that um, she's going to She's going to be able to, to get good pitches and put good swings on it. But yeah, I think it's, it, it's a lot of it is, it goes back to how she's grown up. I mean, her, her dad has been a big influence in her life. Her dad was a baseball player and her sister played softball. So she's been around the game forever. So I think when you're around the game that much, um, you have a tendency to grow mentally as well as you do with your skill set. And I think that's, that's where Palacios is right now. I think she's very strong. Um, she has a very strong mental game. She's got emotional stability and she's got good physical tools. And when you recruited her, did you expect this? Did you, does, does this seem like you were just like when this happened this year and, and, and even last weekend, you're just like, yeah, that's sort of what I thought I'd get from her. Well, you got to remember even the short year last year, she was our, our catcher um, pretty much regularly and Deja was not with us. And so I think that was a really good, um, eye opener for everyone to, to see how she handled that. And um, she handled it quite well and um, was very stable, very mature for her age. I think that's the one thing that helps her a lot is just uh, her, 
her, her game maturity, but just her maturity as a person. And um, so I, I've kind of expected to see this, you know, um, you never know what a kid, what kind of number a kid's going to put up um, when they come into your program. Like I tell people all the time, you know, they ask about recruiting classes. I said, well, ask me when they're juniors and I'll tell you how good they are. Palacios is one of those kids right now that is really, um, you know, she's above the curve. I mean, she, she's really kind of settled down and, and played very mature softball at an early age. And it's fun to watch. Great. Thanks coach. Yep. Troy. So coach, you mentioned that it's pretty humid there and obviously that's going to affect the offenses on both sides, but I was wondering, does that affect pitching at all? I know everybody talks about the offensive end, but does it affect pitching? Yeah, it does. In fact, it, um, it, it really, I think helps pitchers with their break. You know, the more humidity, the more break. It's just like you don't want to be pitching in Colorado for the Rockies. You'd rather be pitching in New York for the Yankees. <laughs> and, and part of that is just the humidity. You know, the ball doesn't carry as much, um, but the ball does break more. There's more resistance in the air. So therefore you have a tendency to see more break in, in pitches. And, um, you know, I, I think the big thing is just understanding that, that the game is played on the ground. You know, for us to sit here and, 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 and try to hit home runs, probably in certain times of the year, um, and Arkansas has um, got good power numbers, you know, but I, I think on the majority of the year right now, we're starting to get a little more humidity and, and I, I still think the ball is going to carry out of here. I mean, I watched today and, and you, you've got to square it up. And if you square it up, the ball is going to go. So I think the home run will, st will still be a factor, um, but it's definitely not something that you're going to live by um, when you're playing in a, a humid climate. And then you guys did a great job of situational hitting mm -hmm. last weekend. How can you carry that over to this weekend? Well, you know, try, I hope we do, because that's, that's the key, you know, in postseason, it's, it's timely hits and timely hits are usually hits that occur with two outs. And, um, you know, when you, when you are in situations where you don't have a lot of base runners, then you've got to find a way when you do have base runners to come through in the clutch. And so, yeah, for us, I think that's going to be a huge part. And I think the team that the team that gets the timely hits and pitches well and plays good defense is the team that's going to win this um, this weekend. And then Oklahoma and Washington, they're going to be playing on ABC Saturday. Can you talk about how much the game has grown since we started coaching? Well, that's exciting. I mean, uh, yeah, since uh, 1985 when I first started here, um, the game has grown tremendously. And I'm just glad that the opportunities are, are starting to come um, for college softball and other people are starting to notice it because it is a fabulous sport, um, great athletes that play the game at a high level. And I think it's time. I think it's time right now that our sport kind of, it's bursting by the seams, but we just need to get, get the right people um, to get behind us. And um, so I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, I think, um, you know, the growth of this sport um, with ESPN, who has played a big part of it. And I think the, the SEC, you know, when they came in and started playing softball and, and uh, I knew darn well that they were going to, if they're going to get in it, they're going to get in it the right way. And I think that's helped grow the sport from coast to coast. And so there's a lot of factors that go into it. And so I'm excited to see that, you know, opportunity. And I hope, um, it, I hope it's a great ball game. And, and I got to say, I hope Washington wins. Ryan, what do you remember about uh, Courtney Dyfel as a as a player at Cal, and what is it like to coach against someone that played against you? Well, it's it's uh, it happens a lot for me because I've been around for a long time. But um, you know, I I recruited her sister uh, Amanda, and I remember sitting in a house with uh, her dad Ron, who is a very good baseball coach in, in his own right, and and Courtney was a good player. Courtney was competitive. Um, she was prepared. She you know, she's about everything that you see as a coach right now. I'm, I'm just really happy for her um, that she's having the success that she's having, but she's earned that. She's, um, she's, she's got a very good um, um, softball knowledge, um, good teacher, um, understands how to handle people. And I think that's the one aspect that occurs when you start being in the game a little bit longer. 90% of the job here is managing people. 
And um, if you can have the, the greatest knowledge in the world, but if, if you can't get that knowledge across to people that are willing to listen, then it, uh, it falls on deaf ears. And I think um, Courtney, I've, I've been involved with her with some clinics. Um, I, I'm very impressed. You know, she's um, a quality coach and um, it did not surprise me that she's had the success that she's had here. And um, the other day you were talking about how, you know, like 20 years ago, you didn't think home field advantage existed in softball, kind of along those lines, um, just because of the rise of technology yeah. and the and availability of information. I mean, how much more do you know about a team like Arkansas than maybe you would have, you know, 20 years ago when you didn't play them uh, ever? Well, it, it's, it's, you can't even compare it. I mean, back in, in those days, if, you know, you'd have to be lucky to put a VHS tape in and, and um, be there at the right time to record a game. So that really, it, it, it was very hard to get information where today every game that the SEC plays and that we play and many conferences play, you can find video. And so um, the information is, I mean, we're in the information age, we all know that. And sometimes the information is very good and sometimes they can overload you. Um, because at the end of the day, you got to take what your team does best and, and play your game, no matter who the opponent is. But it's nice to be able to, to, to get some looks um, at people and um, before you play them. And I think that's a big change in our game, you know, but it's been happening for quite some time. Do you have any examples of that, of, of maybe some, something you've learned about a player or, or their, their sequences in a two, two count and, and maybe how it helps your hitters or. Well, there's, yeah, there's a lot of things. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and tell you everything <laughs> that, that we look for, but um but yeah, I mean, when you're looking at video, number one, you're looking at pitch type. Um, you're looking at break, whether it's late break or it's early break. You're looking at maybe do they get into some patterns? Maybe are they tipping a pitch? Uh, maybe is a catcher tipping a pitch? I mean, there's a lot of things you can look in video. Um, but the key is to be able to get good quality video that's in the right, um, the right um, angle. Uh, otherwise, it can be very deceiving. And so um, nothing's better than the naked eye, but if you can't, I can't watch 20 Arkansas games, but uh, definitely there's 20 on TV that you can sit there and watch and turn off the sound and, and um, see what you can find. We got time for a couple more. Does anybody have a question for Coach Candrea? Eric? Coach, I know we spoke earlier this year when you talked about making that Florida trip 10 days and a big motivation behind that was to play in a humidity for a situation like this in the Supers. How often does that come up when you figure out a schedule, thinking about things like the environment that you're playing in to prepare you for something like this down the road? Well, it, it, it um, is a constant thought of how we can prepare a team. And, um, you know, if the Florida thing, that the thing about Florida back in – in February, it wasn't very humid. I mean, in March. Um, so it, it actually was pretty good weather. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't go there in May or June or July when it gets really ugly. But we really just wanted to take our team on the road. And, um, you know, it began because of COVID, because of a return trip to Florida State who had come to our place. And then it kind of expanded when COVID hit and we were looking for games and wanted to make sure that we, we got some games in. And so um, the big part of that was just testing our team on the road. And, um, you know, in hindsight, that probably um, we didn't get the effects that we wanted. Um, but I still think there's lessons that we can draw from um, from that trip that hopefully will help us. You, you see baseball, Major League Baseball, and in college baseball, they have instant replay. Do you yeah. feel that softball should have instant replay? Are you frustrated that it's not at this point, considering the other sports have moved ahead and had instant replay? There was a controversial ball last week in Arkansas that looked like a home run that was called foul that couldn't be reviewed. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we're at that stage right now. There's a couple of things that have to occur, I think, in our game, many things. But one, uh, instant replay in, in postseason would be really good. I don't think it's something that that um, probably everyone can do yet um, during the regular season. But in postseason, it would be a really good benefit for us to make sure we're getting calls right because there's so much at stake uh, with those calls. And I think the other thing that people never talk about is our game has grown so much, but our umpiring pool has not. And um, therefore, I really believe that there's going to have to come a time when we need to start recruiting and training um, 
umpires the play that, that understand the game at this level. And that's something that I run into all the time is that I just don't feel like umpires are prepared uh, as well as our athletes are prepared. And so the games kind of pass them up and, you know, it, it's a matter of going out and recruiting um, young um, former players that, um, that want to get into that because I think it would help our game too. All right, thanks everyone. That will wrap us up with Coach Candrea in Arkansas. We'll have time at about 4.50 for media availability. All right, bear down, gang. Thank you, Coach. You bet.